Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll be going over my customizable Valkyrie build. And what I mean by this is you can change up your fighting style so much while still being extremely effective. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly content. I also have a Discord set up for anyone looking for more people to play with. The link to that and other Elden Ring related videos will be in the description down below. Alright guys, let's start the build off with the weapons, and for that I'm going with the Partisan Spear. This thing just fits the Valkyrie look so well while having good range, poke attacks, and a rare heavy attack that does a sweeping motion for a wider area of effect. With its Ash of War, I found Sword Dance to be the hardest hitting one while also staggering some of the tougher enemies, but this is where it becomes fully customizable to your liking. Use whichever Ash of War you enjoy the most cause there is no wrong pick in this situation. And in fact, I tend to switch them out constantly to try new ones cause it just keeps it more fun with different options. Since we're going to be using Ashes of War quite a bit, I also use the Shard of Alexander's Talisman. It just increases all special attacks damage by 15%, so it's a nice little buff to make them even more effective. One thing that will always stay the same though is the Occult Variation. Yes, this is an arcane focus build just because of how strong and versatile they are. And most weapons seem to scale decently well with arcane, usually having a B rating for leveling. But we're not done yet cause there's still one more weapon to go over and that being the Cross Naginata. With this, you're gonna wanna use the Seppuku Ash of War with the Occult Variation. I said this was an arcane build before, and bleed scales amazingly well with arcane, so I just had to add this in here for another option. The upfront physical damage on this thing is really nice with it while still being able to proc a blood loss with 1-2 attacks. I don't want to say this weapon's broken, but it's definitely really strong so I didn't want to just pass it up. I'm mainly using this during boss fights because of its crazy damage or if I just don't feel like using Ashes of War and just want to constantly jab at enemies and watch them explode a little. Again, having these options is always nice. Speaking of options, the stats in this build are the exact same stats I used with another two builds I've created. So if you ever get bored of this one, you can very easily swap out your gear and change your playstyle up with another one of these setups. Again, you won't have to relocate any stat points at all to do so. Now, there's another talisman to further increase our damage if you do end up using the Cross Naginata, and that being the Lord of Blood's Exultation. It gives you a 20% damage boost whenever a blood loss happens near you, and it only takes 1-2 attacks to proc this, so it won't be hard to get this going at all. Lastly, we have the Round Shield. Honestly, it's not really that great, but it just matches the look so well and that's kind of the main thing I was going for. Now, to make it somewhat decent, I had to use the Ash of War Barricade on it, which makes your character lose less stamina when blocking attacks, and the Great Shield Talisman that has a similar effect to it. I'm also using the Curved Sword Talisman that increases the damage of counterattacking. Since we're going to be blocking and attacking with our shield up, it just makes sense to throw this in. It's not absolutely needed, but I do find it helpful in given situations. Next is how we're going to maximize this setup and it's really easy. Just use the shield's Ash of War Barricade to block attacks while you either thrust your spear forward at the same time, or counter attack to land heavier hits for more damage. When you're using the Partisan Spear, you'll really want to look for openings to land special attacks cause that's going to do a crazy amount of damage, especially when it comes to tougher enemies that are harder to stagger. And with the Cross Naginata, it's even easier. Just use the Ash of Ors Seppuku and hide behind your shield while you make enemies explode just by poking at them. Very simple and effective. Now, let's take a better look into the armor. I went with quite a few different pieces from different sets to get the look down and I think I nailed it pretty well. With the helmet, I'm using Malena's winged helm. The wings coming out of the sides of the helmet going towards the back just look so clean so I knew I needed to use it for something. For the chest piece, I went with Caden's armor. It really captures the Nordic look with the fur trim hanging over top of the heavy armor. Going to the gloves, I'm using the Elden Lord's bracers which has the same look as the chest piece, having that fur look mixed in with heavy metal armor. And lastly, we have Radon's boots, being the exact same thing as the chest and gloves, except this armor is a bit heavier so it offers some better protection. Next, we have the Flask of Wondrous Physic. 
The tiers I'm using aren't anything special, those being the green burst and green spill. All these do is increase our maximum stamina and stamina recovery speed, which is going to help out quite a bit while blocking attacks with the shield. Now for the minimum stats required. You'll need at least 20 strength and 16 dex to hold the two spears and the shield in one hand. Afterwards, I would recommend putting more points into arcane to increase your physical damage and increase the amount of bleed buildup per swing. I'm also going to put links in the description down below if you want to check out all the items I'm using and where you can find them for yourself. That's everything for today's video. I'd like to give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.